To preview the matchup, no one better to talk to than our frenemy, Alex Jensen, the play-by-play -play voice of the St. Mary's Gales. Alex, welcome to the program. We hope not for the final time, but maybe. It's good to see you guys. Yeah, it's it's crazy to think that this is going to be the last WCC matchup between these two teams at the Marriott Center. There's so much history. I'm sure we'll get into it. But uh, I'm glad to be on. I'm excited to be in Provo. If this last game could be as good as your first game here at the Marriott Center, then Saturday night's going to be one for the ages. What do you remember from that? No question. Uh, yeah, my first game in the Marriott Center was the Dell of a Dagger. And uh, we were just talking about it. That call is gone, man. I have no idea where that call ever did. It certainly wasn't recorded. Uh, but this has been a great rivalry, you know, and it kind of, it, it didn't start there. I remember the year before there was a really heated game between St. Mary's and BYU at the Marriott Center. Uh, the, the Gales won, and the next year was the Dell of a Dagger. Uh, so, yeah, it was. I, I remember the environment, um, just you know, the first time really being in an environment where there's that many people, um, and you know, that much passion for their team, which is what I appreciate so much about the, the BYU fan base. But yeah, just that play was. I mean, you guys saw it, it was it was insane. I, I had a front row seat. I was right there. He took off right in front of me, and to hear to you know to go from Tyler Hawes's shot in the middle of the key. To, to that was was crazy. I've been hooked ever since, man, on this on this rivalry. I've been putting together the uh, you know pregame show with our producer Hema Hamuli for tomorrow night uh, ahead of the contest on ESPN two and BYU Radio, and I've chosen not to include that for obvious reasons. Uh, but when you talk about this rivalry, because when BYU entered the league, we we had certainly circled okay Gonzaga, St. Mary's was in there, but I don't think we expected this to become what it's become. Why is BYU and St. Mary's what it is, in your opinion? Well, I think both teams have kind of, you know, helped taken each other to the next level. I know that's certainly the case with, with BYU as far as it concerns St. Mary's. You know, BYU has helped elevate uh, the Gales program. But these two teams have been fighting for the same spot, you know, for the greater portion of 11, 12 years, however long BYU has been in the league. And, you know, you throw in moments like the Dell of a Dagger. I heard your... Uh, interview with Eric Mika uh, yesterday or a couple days ago, Jerem, and the, and the choke sign and Moraga. I mean, you know, this is a rivalry that's only going to last in WCC play for, you know, a dozen years or so, but it has really burned hot with moments like that, moments like the Eric Mika, um, you know, choke sign and Moraga and some of the vitriol that's gone back and forth between both fan bases and both teams. You know, really in 2000, Jack Landale's senior year, BYU in the in the WCC tournament kept the Gales out of out of the uh, NCAA tournament. I mean that was a team that I think should have made it anyway. Of course, you know, and there's no reason to go down that rabbit hole. But I'm going to miss it, man. I'm really going to miss BYU in the league. I think everybody is. I think everybody knew that this was, you know, that this was coming at some point. Um, but I think it's been a it's been a relationship for as heated as as it's been between BYU and St. Mary's. It's been something that has certainly you know, helped elevate the Gales program and given them a little bit more notoriety nationwide. One thing that has been fun to watch in Marriott Center games is there's the game and then there's the other game, the relationship between Randy Bennett and The Rock, BYU student section. <laughs> Why is that so, uh, so unique? I can't, I, I couldn't tell you. I mean, I, you know, from my experience with Randy Bennett, he is a thousand percent locked in on what's going on on the floor. And if, you know, there are any, you know, if, if the rock feels like he's doing anything in their direction, I can almost promise you that it is not on purpose because his mind is a thousand percent on what's going on on the floor. And that's, what's made him such a good coach. You know, he's two wins away guys from, from 500, yeah. by the way, I do want to note that, uh, you know, if, if the Gales, and he'll, he's going to get there this year. And that's just an incredible accomplishment for somebody who went, uh, who took over a team that was two and 27 at St. Mary's college, you know, their gym at that time looked a lot more like Pepperdine's with the, you know, the wooden bleachers. Uh, but in, as far as the relationship with the rock, you know, I, I don't really get a chance to, to notice that, but uh, you know, I, I think that any interaction that's happening there is probably from Randy Bennett's perspective, a total accident, maybe a little, maybe there's a little bit because, you know, I mean, the Gales or the visiting team walks into their locker room right under the student section. Right. So, you can't help but get a little up close and personal. But, you know, I can tell you from my experience that Randy Bennett is 100% locked in on what's going on on the floor. What do we need to do uh, on this next possession? How do we need to execute our scout? That's what's going through his mind. Maybe afterwards there might be a little bit of chirping. I haven't seen it personally. 
Um, but, it, it, you know, as well as I know Randy Bennett, I, I can tell you exactly that that's what's going through his mind. There's what's a going little on bit. The there, there's a little bit in there because a lot of coaches <laughs> come in here. But The Rock knows when Randy Bennett comes out and uh, it makes it, it it makes it fun. I was at a weird game. <laughs> well, uh, was Jer it last year? Yes. In Utah State. I was doing stats for yes. CBS Sports Network. And I go up there and Randy I've has this weird like interaction. That. Uh, with Utah State, storms off, kind of waves to the crowd, and then is out, and I was like, vintage Randy Bennett. <laughs> it was awesome. I, you know what? From my perspective, I saw him walking off the floor, you know, raising the fist Oh, yeah, in the, the fist bump. <laughs> it, it was, I mean, the whole interaction was, was strange between, uh, you know, he and the Utah State staff. There was some stuff going on back and forth over the last couple of minutes. Uh, I don't know what all that was about, but his reaction was priceless. It was like BYU watching two ex-girlfriends fight. It was just like, I don't know why, but it was really <laughs> enjoyable to see. Let's talk about this St. Mary's team because this, I mean, metrically, this is the best St. Mary's team ever. Uh, seventh in Ken Palm, sixth in defensive efficiency, 35th in offensive efficiency. Watched a couple games, obviously, prepped for this game. I'm really impressed by what St. Mary's is. It's hard for me to think, hey, this is better than some of those Landale, uh, Della Vadova, the Sweet 16 team a while back. But, hey, uh, on paper, this could be the greatest St. Mary's team ever. So what is going so well right now? Well, you know, I think when you compare this team right now to the beginning of the season, and a lot of people forget that with the return of Logan Johnson using his COVID year and Alex Dugas and Kyle Bowen coming back, other than that, this team was pretty young. You know, Aiden Mahaney's a true freshman. Mitchell Saxon starting for the first time. Augustus Marshallona started about 13 games a year ago, but was in and out of the rotation, really. Um, you know, Lemon Bockler uh, decided to head back to Estonia and play professionally over there. So you, there's not a whole lot of experience here. So I think what we've seen over the last few weeks is, you know, these guys are starting, you know, Aiden Mahaney is starting to understand the offense. Guys are understanding their roles. They're getting comfortable with their roles. And you mentioned the defensive numbers, you know, I mean, Randy Bennett, uh, you know, told Steve Croner after the, the Santa Clara game, and I, you know, I can see it with my eyes, this team doesn't have a bad defender. And, you know, going back to that 2020 year, that COVID year, um, you know, this team really adopted a, a gritty mindset. In fact, their, their team motto a year ago, and they've kind of carried on to this year, was gritty, not pretty. And for the uh, <laughs> for the NCAA selection show, they made T-shirts pretty not pretty. It was pretty cool. Uh, but when you combine that mindset with you know what has become a really good offensive team, and as I mentioned, guys figuring their roles out. Aiden Mahaney has been is, is dynamic. You know, I kind of compare him to an Alex Barcelo type. Uh, maybe a little bit different, but you know, you can compare him to a bunch of different guards throughout the West Coast Conference. But when you combine those two things, the attention to detail, the individual talent. Um, and the cohesion, this team's connected, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot like last year where it's a connected club. Everybody kind of buys into the culture. Uh, they've got maybe a little bit more talent than they had uh, a year ago at, at some, some certain spots. It's, it's been a lot of fun to watch. But again, I think, you know, over the last few weeks, uh, the biggest difference has been, and since that three-game losing streak in particular uh, at the end of November and beginning of December, you know, that these guys are really figuring out where they fit in, figuring out their roles and understanding, you know, what is being asked of them. Alex Jensen, voice of the Gales on BYU Sports Nation this morning. St. Mary's will be here tomorrow night in front of 18,000 fans, a little bigger than the Moraga 3500. With the experience that you just described and the, the, the success that you're having, uh, what's the crowd going to do to this uh, Gales team coming into this environment? Yeah, well, they haven't played a road game in this type of environment yet. They've played three road games so far this year. That's kind of the way college basketball is going right now. You know, with a team like St. Mary's to get good games, they've got to play on, you know, on neutral courts. Um, but, you know, I, I really I, I wish you guys were able to make it out to Moraga because while that place only seats 3,500, I'm not kidding you. It gets as loud as any other gym, any other arena in the country. I, I don't doubt that at all. There's nowhere for the sound to go. But in terms of road environment, I mean, we'll see, you know, uh, the core of this team and, you know, the senior leadership has played in environments like this. They played at Gonzaga. They played at BYU. Um, you know, they played the NCAA tournament. They played at the Maui, you know, and, and while those places aren't the same type of environment as the Marriott Center, um, you know, they have that experience. Now, how will it affect some of the some of the younger guys? I mean, I think the jury's kind of out. Um, I, I don't get the feeling being around this team. I mean, you take Aiden Mahaney, for example. This kid is not afraid of anything. 
I mean, he's he's really he, he's got the confidence that when he walks in, you know, he's one of the best guys in the gym. And he's not afraid to shoot it if he's not having a good night. He's not afraid of the moment. Um, and that's just what I've seen so far. Again, he hasn't played in front of 18,000 people who are wanting him to fail. So, you know, in terms of a road environment, you know, the crowds have been outstanding in Moraga this year. And we can say, you know, it's, it's it, you know, I, I can feel the jokes coming at me already from the viewers. You know, it's easy to fill up 3,500. I get it, man. But you ask some of the BYU guys that have played there in front of a sold out crowd, that is not an easy place to play. But on the St. Mary's side, as you mentioned, Dave, it's a lot different when everyone in there is rooting for you to fail. So, um, you know, how does that play itself out? I don't know. Well, I think we'll, we'll find out a lot in the first, you know, eight minutes of the game. I think Stanford would pray to have 3,500 people at one of their games. <laughs> yes, and, and, we, and we get a good Bay Area joke, right, as well. Um, we, we get it, too, because uh, men and women's volleyball fill up a 5,000-seat venue, and it's one of the best volleyball environments in the country in Smith Fieldhouse. Yeah. So, yeah, we absolutely get it. But earlier you made a joke about the Pepperdine gym. BYU fans love a small gym joke. They just do, so well done <laughs> by you. Do you feel like right now, and Sean Farnham does, VSPN, that St. Mary's is the best team in the league? We're certainly going to see it in, in uh, two games with the Zags coming up the rest of the regular season. Yeah, I've always been of the idea that the champ is the champ until you knock them off. Now, I know that's not your question, but, you know, Gonzaga, let's not forget, they still have wins over Alabama. They've beaten Xavier. Uh, they've played a really tough non-conference schedule. So I think right now St. Mary's is playing better than Gonzaga. You know, I think in Saturday's game, if Saturday's game were tomorrow uh, between St. Mary's and Gonzaga, I think St. Mary's would probably be favored, especially considering the fact that the game's in Moraga. You know, I, I just, I, I, considering who Gonzaga is and who they've been uh, over the last two decades, you know, I, I hesitate to say St. Mary's is a better team than Gonzaga. I think they're playing better right now. And I think that the Gales are still getting better. Um, but I, I hesitate to go there, man. I just do. I, I know the karma that's going to come down upon me and the Gales if I say that St. Mary's better than Gonzaga right now. So I'll say the Gales, I think, pretty clearly are playing better than Gonzaga right now. I mean, their average margin of victory in the WCC is almost 22. I mean, that's what we're used to seeing Gonzaga do, right? Um, and they've played a lot of similar teams, a lot of the same teams at the same venues that Gonzaga has. But, I, again, I stretch to knock off the champ until the champ's been knocked off. So St. Mary's is playing better than Gonzaga right now, but I don't think I'm ready to go all the way there yet. LMU went up there and beat Gonzaga, uh, which opens the door for St. Mary's uh, yep. to, to win this regular season title, which would be an upset considering everything you just said about Gonzaga, especially the way they started the season. Uh, so what does that mean for tomorrow night's game? Now that the door's been open for the Gales to actually – take down Gonzaga in a game where they're not even playing the Zags, but they're coming to BYU to play. Uh, who's, got more to, who's got more to lose tomorrow night, St. Mary's or BYU? Well, I think if you look at it in, in the big picture, right, and listen, I mean, this, this team wants to win a WCC championship, regular season, tournament, you know, whatever. Um, you know, if you look at the big picture, St. Mary's loses this game. They're still in a good position, I think, going into March. On the other side for BYU, and I'm sure you guys have talked about this quite a bit, if BYU loses this game, now they're four and five in the WCC. They're staring at, a, you know, I mean, you know, fifth, say, I think they're in fifth right now. You can drop them down to six. USF is playing better. Um, and, you know, it just, it, it kind of muddies the picture a little bit. I think both teams need this game. Um, you know, I think BYU is going to be the more desperate team. Uh, coming into Saturday, just because of where they sit in the standings right now. You, I mean, you want to avoid that first day at the WCC tournament as much as you possibly can. I mean, neither St. Mary's or BYU has been there, um, but that is a gauntlet, man. I mean, I think it's, what, five wins in six days or four wins in five days. You've got to, you know, three wins in four days to, to even get to the WCC championship game. And I think, you know, in Vegas, considering the way Gonzaga is playing right now, it's going to be a little bit more open than it has been over the last few years. Um, so I think playing for that seating is really important. It's really important. Um, so I, you know, I, I mean, I think it's important for, I, it's, I think it's a big game for both teams, you know, for St. Mary's winning on the road, uh, is it's obviously tougher than winning at home. Right. And you get that one in hand, they've already got Santa Clara and, and USF. You get that one in hand, you've already got a game on Gonzaga. Like you said, it just, it, it gives you a little bit more of a cushion, right? You have another tough game out of the way, uh, without taking a loss. But at the same time, for BYU, and again, I'm sure you guys have talked about it, 
I mean, they're in an interesting place in the standings right now. And it just feels like every single game is going to have an impact. When we, By the time we get to Vegas, you can circle so many dates on the calendar and say, if we wouldn't have slipped up here, you know, we would have been playing on Saturday for the first time instead of Friday. You know, those, all those games are going to be super important when you look at the middle of those standings and how close all those teams are. So it's important for both clubs. I mean, you know, the Gales to win a WCC championship, getting this one would be massive. Uh, but again, for BYU, where they sit in the standings right now, man, I mean, you do not want to be anywhere close to seven through 10. So I think BYU is going to be the more desperate team, but that does not mean that this is not a big game for St. Mary's. St. Mary's has not won in the Marriott Center since 2017 when it was ranked 22nd, and the Gales come in tomorrow ranked 22nd. We'll see how it goes tomorrow. No BYU send karma for you. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> thanks for joining the program, Alex. Safe travel. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, good to see you. I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Thanks for having me. We'll see you. Alex Jensen, voice of the Gales, joining us. Yeah, it's